Hi guys, welcome to another exciting edition of Kimikaze Creations videos. I'm working my way through the process of installing this supercharger system that uh, Shane supplied me and have uh, had a few struggles, uh, mostly the environment that I'm fitting it into. Um, nothing to do with Shane's kit. It is really logical when you, uh, when you look at it, work out where things go, how they fit up has been so simple uh, to do. Um, the environment I've been working in is my, uh, the head that I got, the, uh, the Yellow Terra head didn't come with any uh, manifold studs. The, I had a combination of studs and bolts. You know, over time things had been changed and it was really hard to get the bolts to fit in. Um, so what I've done is sourced a set of standard studs which has made it a lot easier. I've sat this supercharger back on there and uh, it's going to be really easy to get the nuts onto those studs now where before trying to get a bolt into the hole was near impossible. So make it a bit of progress. Uh, I do subscribe to the philosophy of uh, do it right, do it once and it's taken a little bit to get to that process uh, here in my head and in reality, but it's all starting to work out. And when this thing does go together, it will be right and it will work beautifully. So I'll show you a couple of things and a couple of decisions I've made and we'll get into it. Because there's no requirement for me to have a distributor anymore, um, one of the other parts that Shane has supplied is this little bung to plug up the distributor hole so it'll go down into here with a little bit of grease on it plug into here and um, the original little clamp will hold it into position so that's a small part installed now i'm going to have a look at mounting the coil packs So you don't see a lot of that little bung in there, as cute as it is. The ignition system is bolted up over the top of it um, using the, uh, the last and the first bolt in those uh, side engine covers. And I just, I used the same bolts because I actually had, I bought these new bolts when I built the engine. They're a bit longer than required, they're a stainless bolt, and um, I put an O-ring, found a good size O-ring, and put it on the um, cover side of the bolt, and then screwed back in through the bracket to hold it on, which should seal any oil from coming out there, but that is an awesome looking ignition system. So it's got over here the uh, main electrical connector, again, that should hook up to the ECU, and I'll have my leads in a second and I'll go and find them and fit them up to the plugs. And then I might look at fitting on the uh, trigger wheel down the bottom. I've got to bring the motor up to top dead centre and line up a few marks and that should have it ready to go. On this trigger wheel that goes onto the harmonic balancer, Shane's had it nicely engraved with uh, top dead centre. There's a line just here, so I need to line that line up with the timing mark on the harmonic balancer. And uh, once I've got the engine to top dead centre, line those two marks up and uh, lock it off with the uh, bolts that have been supplied, new bolts over there and the pulley, get her all lined up. Uh, and that'll have the motor timed and ready. This sensor will bolt on there to, to pick up the gap in the uh, trigger wheel. Um, so I've got a nice new stainless steel bracket that will bolt in to the timing cover and I can set the distance and it will pick up and sense that gap in the trigger wheel and uh, send a pulse to the computer to fire those coils I just put on. 
The engine's now on the compression stroke. I had my wife stick a finger in the spark plug hole to double check I had compression. And I've got the timing marks lined up. So the harmonic balancer is sitting on top dead center on the compression stroke. I've now mounted up the trigger sensor bracket, little stainless steel bracket down there, and it's got the sensor mounted in it. But on the back you can see the plug that'll go to the ECU. Um, got the trigger wheel in behind that main pulley which bolts straight onto the harmonic balancer, the standard three bolt holes. And the timing's been done, so my top dead center marks are all aligned and it was on compression stroke. So I've also just now got to set up the leads and then pretty much it's set and timed for uh, getting it running eventually when I get the computer set up and get the fuel system in and finally get the supercharger mounted. So plug leads are on, hopefully I've done that all right. Um, that's a, a stage in the process complete. I think I've talked about these extractors and I think trying to cut corners and make adjustments and uh, speed the process along. I was going to work with these original extractors. Now these extractors were for and came off the original 202, which was a nine port head, it was a whole red motor system, where the head that I now have on this motor is a blue-black style head. Now I don't know, the, the ports are the same size uh, in exhaust, the only thing that changes that I knew of was the uh, inlet ports are much taller. But the stud pattern also seems to vary a little bit. I've actually modified these a little bit and you can see different <laughs> different grindings and material taken out and edges taken off to get these to work. And it's just not working with this supercharger and my manifold. I've also done the wrapping on these um, to reduce the amount of heat in the engine bay. But uh, I think that wrapping is going to be coming off because what I've done is bought a set of Genie extractors. They're 12-port Genies. Um, they're tri-wise, two into one on three, and then it's three into one down the bottom, down in this area. It's three into one, and then it's a two-and-a-half-inch outlet, which will match up nicely to do a two-and-a-half-inch exhaust. And I'll throw a picture of them up in the corner of the screen in a second. Now, as I said, I've replaced all the studs in the head except for one. I managed to, I had three in an old head of mine out the back and I managed to go down to a local engine builder and he had an old head there with four and there's eight studs all together. So this one down here is still 3.8 to 3.8 UNC. All of the rest are 3.8 uh, UNC to 3.8 UNF. So they're UNF, a fine thread on the outer part. And I'll put that manifold back on and you can see now it's going to be much easier to get the nuts on the studs. Before I was trying to align a bolt with a bolt hole. Uh, with the, uh, you'll notice that I've taken off the fuel rail and injectors. And I can now actually get in there and uh, tighten those bolts up. So that's where I'm at. Um, with that manifold and now I'm on the wait list for it to come. It's about the 14th it's due so that's going to hold me up but I'll, uh, I'll get into a few other things and uh, see how we go. Love that supercharger. So there you go guys, that's where I'm up to at this stage. Um, really enjoying the build process, it's, it's nice to be working on a clean unit and putting in clean gear into a clean car. Uh, a lot of mechanics don't get those options and quite often I say who'd be a mechanic for a, a job. It's just um, hot work and can be greasy and dirty but this is a pristine environment. Really enjoying it. 
Um, I've got a few things uh, still to look at while I wait for those extractors to come uh, and probably going to have a look at uh, the fuel system and getting into the boot and changing over what I've got to the new one that Shane supplied and possibly having a look at that computer system, getting it in and maybe even power it up and having a bit of a look at the software. So making progress, keep watching my videos. If you hadn't subscribed, please do. It's going to help me out in the long run and uh, I'm loving doing what I'm doing. Keep in touch guys, keep commenting and keep watching.